and I'm checking out a super awesome vehicle. It's a 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit California edition. Really awesome vehicle that has tons of features. It looks amazing. It's going to be a very detailed video, so hang on and let's check it out. One of the most stunning things about this vehicle is the 20 inch satin carbon alloy wheels that really grabs your attention when you look at the profile of the vehicle. So you have four wheel disc brakes, but look at the thickness of those ventilated disc brakes here in the front. Check it out. And then you have solid disc brakes there in the back. The name of this color is Bright White Clear Coat, and it looks fantastic and classy with all the titanium, is what they call it, satin trim accents. But you also have some shiny chrome there in the grill, and then it's surrounded by that titanium look. Really amazing Jeep in every aspect. The headlights are surrounded by a LED accent, and the headlights are a bifunction projector system powered by HID bulbs. And then you have halogen fog lights down here at the bottom. You also notice that it has the parking sensors across the front bumper. It's in the front and the back, that those sensors. You also have the adaptive cruise control radar system right here in the center. But check it out, really looking awesome. So this is what the key looks like. It is a proximity key with a lock and unlock button, power lift gate, and remote start. You also have a panic button down here in case you need it. And you have a physical key on the inside in case you need that as well. But typically, you just keep the key in your pocket and you can use the vehicle without actually taking the key out. As long as you have the key nearby, it could be in your pocket or whatever. You just walk up. If you want to lock the doors, you just push this button and it locks the doors. To unlock it, you just put your hand behind the handle and it unlocks it, it senses the key, senses your hand, and lets you in. So here's the inside of the passenger door and man does it look amazing. You have this real wood grain accent here. You can actually feel the, uh, the grain in it, which is amazing. And you have the stitching right in here in a French design, all soft to the touch surfaces here with the brown and the black. You have a premium sound system with the Harman Kardon uh, brand badging there. Bottle holder, speakers here, here, as well as up here. Here's your threshold, which is illuminated. So this will illuminate at nighttime. So it says Summit, that's pretty cool. Power adjustments on the passenger seat with power lumbar support, a four-way power lumbar support. You have heated and cooled brown, like a saddle brown color seats here with the stitching here and perforations here in the center. And it even has the Summit name embroidered in the back of the seats. Really awesome leather seating, very comfortable. Decent bolstering without getting too intrusive on your body, but it just really kind of hugs you. Plenty of leg room here in the front, massive amounts of leg room. You have uh, floor mats that snap in place, and these are a Berber, kind of a Berber design. And you have the Jeep, like a patch there as well. Of course, you can upgrade to the all season mats, which is highly recommended by me. They're like the rubber mats that you know fit in there perfectly. And check it out, you have some more of that wood grain here on the dash with the chrome accent below it. You have a lockable glove compartment that's felt lined. And you also have a place to put your manual and stuff right up in here. You see it has a privacy glass here in the back. Keeps the sun from glaring in on you. Well, let's take a look in the back here. So here's the inside of the back door. Really amazing colors. You also have the wood grain, the chrome accent there, all soft to the touch, the stitching, everything back here as well, as well as two speakers in the door. You have the big one and the little one there. Okay, so here's your threshold. Really comfortable heated seats back here as well. It's a two-stage heated seat with the perforations there. You even have the embroidered Summit name in the back of the back seats as well. Plenty of leg room. Now this seat is all the way back. so. But even with the seat all the way back, I can sit back here and it's not really a problem. Um, but typically you wouldn't have the seat all the way back like this. But you know, even if you do, especially considering the seat's 
quite a ways off the floor so your knees aren't sticking up in the air. It's just, you know, not bad at all. So you have a center armrest with cup holders here and check out the chrome accents. That's looking classy. So right in here you have some vents, USB chargers, so the backseat drivers can charge their devices and leave you alone while you're driving. And then you have the two-stage heated seat controls as well as a 115 volt AC adapter back here, 150 watts. A little bit of a hump there in the center, so the center passenger has to, uh, you know, take that in consideration. It's not a big, big deal or anything, but it is there. And check out this headliner and sunroof. You have a panoramic, panoramic sunroof, a suede headliner, and then you have these little lights here, which are pretty neat when you open up the doors. But just everything about this vehicle is super impressive. Now these seats will fold down in a 60-40 split. So even with this seat all the way back, you can fold this seat down. You don't have to pull the seat up to do this. See the headrest kind of folds down and that way you have a increased cargo capacity back here. And also this is an easy way to access uh, the, or just for me to show you the, uh, the anchor. Because when the seat's up, the actual anchor is covered up with this flap. So you don't want to hook up your car seat anchor to this little thing. Uh, this is actually the car seat anchor for your latch system. It has a little symbol there. Okay, let's take a look at the back of the vehicle. Really amazing looking. You have that platinum, satin, metallic trim piece around the lights there. And they're LED lights, by the way. You also have it across the bottom. Your parking sensors are here. You also have a backup camera right in here. And dual exhaust, letting the V6 breathe a lot better. And you have the Summit badging over here. And so this has a powered lift gate. So you can use the key to do it. That's one way to do it. So you just double tap that and it goes up. The other way is just walk up and there's a little button under here. You just push that button and step back and it'll come It'll go right up for you. All right, and it goes up quite a ways too, so you don't have to worry about bump, bumping your head unless you're like super tall. You also have some two lights in on the inside, which helps out at nighttime. You gotta check out my night video on the Grand Cherokee. Looks amazing at night. Okay, so here's the cargo area, and you'll see it has this uh, shade right here. Let me go ahead and move that out of the way so you can see what, we, what it looks like. There we go. Huge cargo area. And you have these little metal things here to help protect the vehicle as you're loading stuff up. And you also have, this has the, the cargo mat in place, but you also have these rails right here to kind of slide things easier in the vehicle in case you need those. Here's your subwoofer, part of your premium sound system, 12 volt power supply, and some grocery bag hangers and net hangers and stuff like that. It actually has a net here in the bag of on this side. You also have an LED rechargeable flashlight. So while you're driving the vehicle you have this LED flashlight that's sitting in this little spot charging so when you need it it's right there. Okay so under here is your spare tire. It's a full-size spare tire and you have the tools and everything. You also have this little funnel which I'll explain that in a minute. But this thing can be held up with this little hook. So you take this little hook. It's easier to do one, two, if you have two hands, but I have one hand on the camera. But anyways, you, you hook it up like so. That way it's out of your way. And then you have these, I have access to stuff back here, but check it out. You have these bins and you can put stuff in them, dump them out. They're good for just extra, extra junk that you want to have out of the way especially on long trips things accumulate so you have ac you know access to these little uh, carry tote things and then of course you can put some stuff around the spare tire if you really need to but uh so that's really convenient i really like that so to lower the power lift gate you can use the key of course or you can just push this button and it'll kind of beep at you letting it letting you know it's going to come down it starts coming down and if anything gets in the way it'll stop and go back up so the more it goes down the more uh, pressure it has so you want to really watch out for like 
children's fingers or something there but otherwise it's not going to you know like crush anything of any significance it's just once it gets meets a little resistance it goes back up so the fuel door it's a lockable fuel door is on the driver's side and you just open it up and you don't have to worry about a cap now you remember that funnel i showed you in the back next to the spare tire you do have to use that if you're using a gas can but otherwise you just put the nozzle in from the gas station pump your gas and you're good to go completely capless it does have a little seal around the outside but it is a two-stage system here to where uh, it keeps things from actually getting in the gas tank so you don't have to really worry about that you can start the vehicle using the remote start you just double tap that and it'll start up as long as the vehicle's you know secure but without using that feature to actually start the vehicle uh, you just put your foot on the brake you have to have the key inside you put your foot on the brake and push this button here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat you can see that the floor mat snaps in place you have the brake and accelerator pe accelerator pedals there you also have a place to put your left foot here on the on that side which is a must for me anyway foot actuated parking brake so let's go ahead and take a look under the hood so to lift up the hood doesn't get much easier than this there's a little latch here on the right where the p is move it towards the center and you lift it up just a little bit and it'll go up the rest of the way by itself all right so there you go 3.6 liter v6 295 horsepower 265 pound-feet of torque made it to a really awesome eight-speed automatic transmission you can see a little bit of engine down here but for the most part it's covered up in plastic unfortunately okay let's take a look on the inside of the driver's door similar to the other side as far as styling but it has a few more buttons you have two presets for your power seat on the driver's side there and there you also have the door lock controls power window controls side mirror controls but you also have the ability to fold your side mirrors so you have the power folding side mirrors just with a touch of a button so that's pretty neat and let's go ahead and roll up the windows it's a one touch up and down for the both the front windows and they are acoustic glass so let me go ahead and see if i can show you this so you can see the panes of glass are separated by an acoustic material um, so there's two panes of glass and it keeps outside noise from penetrating the vehicle so that's pretty neat power seat here on the driver's side as well and these seats i just want to mention they go up down you can adjust them forward and back they're like a dentist chair so you can really get that right position same thing with the lumbar support you can go up and down in and out all that good stuff okay so right in here your headlight controls you have an automatic off parking light and then your headlights interior gauge dimmer switch is right here and the steering column has a power tilt and telescoping steering column so it really makes it easy to get it in that perfect position here on the side mirror is a little triangle and that is for the blind spot monitoring system so basically when there's a vehicle in your blind spot there's actually a sensor back here in the back of the vehicle that will detect when the vehicle is in your blind spot while you're on the highway and it'll illuminate that little triangle now if you put your turn signal on while that while there's somebody in your blind spot it's also going to give you an audible alert as well now this system is also useful for a cross path detection system so if you're back if you're parked like say these trucks and you're backing out of a parking space perpendicularly it will let you know if there's a vehicle coming from one side or the other so that way sometimes it's hard to see around the vehicles beside you it just kind of helps you out with that when backing up okay so let's go ahead and take a look here on the inside I'm definitely impressed with the wood grain right in here that looks amazing especially when you have the light cast on it like that and you can really see the little wood grain features it's in there as well but just overall with the interior color the black 
everything about this vehicle is impressive. Dashboard, all soft to the touch with the stitching. Okay, so let's, before we go into all the details on the inside of the car, let me just show you the window sticker in case you want to use the pause button and read everything. So the interior color is dark sienna brown, and it has the Quadradrac 2 four-wheel drive system. And then you can see the Summit California Edition package right here. But of course, you can use the pause button to get all the information that you want off of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start here on the steering wheel. It is a leather wrapped steering wheel with some wood at the very top. This is real wood, by the way. All the wood in this vehicle is real wood. And it's very grippy. So you don't. Have, it looks like it would be slippery, but when you actually hold it, it's very grippy. So you don't have to worry about the steering wheel slipping out of your hand or anything. Like literally, it's more grippy than this. So once I get up to here, it's more grippy. Okay, so this is a heated steering wheel too. So that really, that's really good in the winter time. You have some stitching here on the inside. Okay, so quite a few buttons here on the steering wheel. Here on the front, on this side, on the right, you have the cruise control. You also have the adaptive cruise control features here that you can turn on and you can set your, your distance from the vehicle in front of you with these buttons right here. And this will keep you at a safe distance from the vehicle in front of you while matching their speed. So that's what the adaptive cruise control system does. Really awesome feature. You gotta experience it if you haven't already. Okay, so on the back of the steering wheel, you have this little toggle switch here with a center button, and that is your volume for your radio. So you can adjust your volume, and the center button cycles through AM, FM satellite radio. You also have paddle shifters right above that on both sides. So you have the plus and minus right here in case you want to cycle through the eight gear ratios. Uh, manually, you can do that with the, uh, the paddle shifters or the shifter, which I'll show you in a minute. So on the back of the steering wheel, just below that on the left side, you have the ability to change through your stations. Okay, and then the center button will cycle through your presets there at the top. So that's really handy. Okay, so right in here is your Bluetooth controls. You can make calls, receive calls, and hang up. You can also use the voice recognition system to go to specific addresses or change the radio or make calls. Lots of cool stuff there. These buttons right here correspond with the screen between the gauges which we'll get to in just a minute and then you have the uh, windshield wiper front and rear windshield wiper controls there okay so let's look at the gauges uh, really awesome black background with kind of suspended uh, illuminated gauges looking really impressive you have your rpms here on the left on the right you have your engine coolant temperature as well as your fuel gauge there what gear you're in outside temperature what direction your vehicle's facing your odometer on the very bottom but you notice it has a big digital speedometer there in the center. Now I noticed that the camera kind of picks up the screen a little bit more than the actual you know, naked eye. So when you're actually looking at this, you don't actually see the, differ the differences between this and this. So it kind of blends in more than just looking at it through the camera for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, so that, you know, kind of that gives you that um, you know, suspension, suspended look, I guess you can say. But anyways, um, so these buttons right here allow you to change the screen. So right now we have a big digital speedometer, but I'm going to push to the right, and it's going to change to a more of an analog style. So you have that style and that style. And you notice you have icons here on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down so you can see this is your vehicle info screen, which you see your tire pressure. I scroll to the right, and I can get more information like the transmission temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, oil life, battery voltage, tire pressure again. So that shows you that, you know, you just kind of keep scrolling through and you can get more information there. Scrolling down again, this is your full time, your, your uh, full drive system and what it's doing. So right now it's in automatic um, and you have a sand, a snow and a rock and a mud. So you can, you know, cycle through those in case you need those. But the automatic is, um, you know, it's just basically the all around one. You can also get the ground clearance. So right now I have the vehicle up as high as it'll go. So using the buttons over here next to the shifter, uh, you can actually raise and lower the vehicle. Okay, so the air suspension uh, is now lowering the vehicle. So that, that screen will actually show you what ride height you're at now. Scrolling to the right again, you can also see your articulation on your drivetrain. And the 
actually this is your uh, drivetrain whether you're using four-wheel drive or not and then here is your articulation right here so that's pretty neat it shows your wheels up and down how, how you're how you're doing off-road which is pretty interesting for a vehicle like this scrolling to the right again it goes back to what your uh, you know what drive mode you're in okay so let's scroll down so you can see adaptive cruise control is now off once you turn that on you can actually see your distances so as you're adjusting your uh, distances on the adaptive cruise control you can actually see about where you're actually at as far as your distance All right, scrolling down again this is your fuel economy it'll have this little bar that goes up and down as you're driving and then you have an average and also a range scrolling down again will give you your trip you have two trips a and b and it gives you your miles average miles per gallon and also your time scrolling down again this is your this vehicle has a start and stop feature is what they call it it basically turns the engine off while you're sitting at a stoplight for for a period of time as soon as you let go of the brake pedal however it'll start the engine and that way it kind of saves a little bit of gas of course you can turn that feature off if you want to all right this is what your radio is doing storage messages will be here and then you have a setup screen uh, you can set up the screen like say if you want to have something different here uh, right now you have the compass um, you can change that to uh, outside temperature you can have nothing there you can have your trip trip a or trip B trip B uh, miles per gallon average miles per gallon and then range range is pretty much the uh, what I would put there so I'm gonna go ahead and put that now okay all right so let's scroll down again and you can see um, this is just back to your speedometer that you can change so when you're when you're on this speedometer as you scroll your information will be in the center and if you have this speedometer the information will be more prominent and the digital speedometer will just be there at the top okay so that's kind of a quick rundown of the digital screen now you don't if you're a little bit overwhelmed with all that information you don't actually have to go in there and check it all the time it's just there in case you need it okay so right in here is your center stack so Here's your 8.4 inch touchscreen, which is super easy to use. You have these icons across the bottom, and you can they always stay there. You also have your clock there at the very top, and your outside temperature. So here in the radio screen, which we're in now, you have AM, FM, satellite radio. You have some your presets, favorites there at the top, and it kind of shows you what your what station and what's playing. You can adjust your audio right here. You have speed adjusted volume. You can you know has a balance equalizer. So you can adjust it all the way you want it, all the way you want it. You also play music through other sources besides the radio and USB auxiliary input, uh, the Bluetooth wirelessly, which is pretty neat, and the SD card input, which I'll show you where those are at in a second. And then you have your controls for your heated and cooled seats, as well as heated steering wheel. On uh, and then you have there on the passenger as well. You can turn your auto dimmer mirror on and off, and also you have a ton of settings that you can go in and customize the way you want okay next icon is your apps so you can have like Pandora iHeartRadio um, travel link that's really awesome you can get fuel prices and sort it by distance or price brand you get movie listings weather that's that's one of my favorite things is uh, travel links that's one of the cool apps that you that you have in there um, your climate control is here right now it's off let's go ahead and turn it on and turn the fan down so we don't get interrupted by it so here's your temperatures and you can see it's a separate temperature you see you have the driver and passenger now you can sync them by pushing that button and then that way the uh, both of them will be the same you have your air conditioning recirculate the air front and rear defrosters where you want the air to blow there in the center it's pretty straightforward of course you have the buttons down here and physical buttons as well so you don't actually have to use the screen if you don't want to navigation you can put in a specific address you can save your home address you can have different favorites stuff like that or you can go to the map and view the map so i can zoom in and out on the map so we can kind of get our bearings see where we're at see where we're going and you notice the map is pretty easy to read the the words kind of get small as you zoom out to this point but you know this is 
for the most part, the street names and everything will be very clear and easy to read as you're driving. See the little bubbles that pop up, uh, so that way you're not, you know, distracted from the road trying to actually see the, the names and everything. Okay, so the phone, once you pair your phone with the system, the Bluetooth system, which only takes a 30 seconds or less, you have access to your phone book, recent calls, um, you can have a little dial pad there, and you have the uh, caller ID, you have your favorites there at the very top. You can always transfer the call back to your cell phone in case you want to have a private call. So there's just kind of a rundown of all the icons there um, on the screen. And like I said, you don't actually have to go in there on all this stuff. It's just there in case you want to. And you can actually turn the screen off. So if I want to turn the screen off, I just push that button. Don't even have to worry about it. At any time, I just t tap the screen, it comes right back on. The back button is to go back out of certain screens. Four-way flashes are here. Okay, so you kind of have the traditional volume knob here, tune through the stations, and then you have the redundant buttons for your uh, climate control, which your fan speed, your temperature, and you know different controls there, defrosters. Your parking sensors, you can turn those on and off by pushing that button, and that will turn off for front and rear. Your um, start-stop feature, we can turn that feature off. Eco is automatically on, but you can turn it off here, and it automatically turns off when you put sport mode on, and sport mode will kind of tell the vehicle that you want the highest performance not really caring about fuel economy at this moment and if you need to spin tires or for whatever reason like say if you are um, like say stuck in the mud or snow or whatever it's hard to imagine this vehicle getting stuck but if you need to spin tires for whatever reason you can turn off the traction control right there okay so under here is a neat little pocket that's felt lined but you also have your 12 volt power supply you see it has a little key on it um, that means that it turns on and off with the ignition switch then you have your USB auxiliary and SD card inputs for playing music through the sound system and check it out it's backlit so that's pretty cool looks really cool at night too cup holders are right here and they're backlit as well which looks cool so here's your shifter and this is a little bit different from the previous years this is just more of a traditional trip shifter that people are going to be more familiar with uh, the previous models had a electronic shifter was slightly different so let's go ahead and put it in reverse so we can check out the backup camera now the backup camera has these grid lines which will move as you turn the steering wheel so I'm moving the steering wheel and you can see those grid lines moving kind of giving me an est estimated trajectory of the vehicle as I'm backing up and also a green yellow and red so you don't get too close and also when you're in reverse you will see the parking sensors active here in the center and they will also illuminate and make a beeping noise if you get close to something so more than likely you're not going to back in or hit something with this vehicle unless you're just completely not paying attention okay so there's reverse there's neutral and there's drive now this is the normal drive position it's going to cycle through all eight gear ratios automatically for you now if you want to manually do it yourself you just move it over here to the left, this is manual mode, and you can cycle through the gear ratios like a ratchet shifter up and down. And you'll know what gear you're in because it'll show it right here. Of course, you can use the paddle shifters. Now, I want to mention something about the paddle shifters as well. If you accidentally bump this paddle shifter while you're driving, it's not a big deal. There's eight gear ratios. It's not going to blow up anything. But if you want to go back into drive, you just push and hold the plus, and it'll go right back into drive. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so here's your very simple four-wheel drive controls. It's advanced technology, but it's simple to use. So you have your four-wheel drive system. It's automatic right now. And you have a mud, rock, snow, and sand. So that way you can kind of tell the vehicle that you need some help in those particular environments. You can raise and lower the vehicle using the air suspension system. So, so that's pretty cool. It's easy to get in and out of the vehicle when you have it really low. And then you have a four-wheel drive low system to where you can get down and it'll really have a high gear ratio to really um, you know crawl through whatever you need to do up hills or whatever it happens to be in an extreme off-road situation and the same thing with this downhill descent button this is for off-road use only you'll go really slow and it's going to keep the vehicle from um, you know going too fast down a hill or whatever while navigating through rocks or loose gravel or whatever it is so that's pretty neat really advanced system uh, in this vehicle as far as the full drive goes anyway okay so here's your center armrest and it's a really good thickness very soft and comfortable has a stitching here as well and you can share it with your passenger so that's a good thing 
Now it has two buttons, a small one and a big one. The small one opens up a small compartment and it's felt lined, has a place for wires to go in and out of it. And then you close it and then there's a big button. The big button opens up the big compartment. Isn't that cool? So that's felt lined as well. You also have a 12 volt power supply buried in there. And you can see a little indicator here, it has a battery. So it's always on. So it's connected directly to the battery. So if you want to charge your cell phone while you're going to store, the vehicle's turned off, it still can charge the cell phone, which is pretty neat. And of course you have a place for wires to go in and out. Okay, here's your rear view mirror. And the rear view mirror is auto dimming right now because I have the shade over the light sensor, as well as the side mirrors are auto dimming. So you can see that side mirror and that side mirror, which are heated by the way. Uh, they turn on when you turn on the rear defroster. But, uh, but check it out, you have these buttons there on the bottom of the mirror. You have an assist button, like roadside assistance. This vehicle has its own cellular connection, so you can push that button with, even without your cell phone. Let's say your battery's dead or whatever. Uh, you can push that button and you can talk to somebody about vehicle features or roadside assistance or whatever it happens to be. Uh, you're going to talk to a Jeep rep representative, basically. And then 911 will directly call 911. It'll go straight to a 911 operator, so and you can actually talk to them. If you accidentally push the button, it's not a big deal because you can cancel here on the screen after 10, within 10 seconds. Right on top of the rearview mirror is your um, microphones for your Bluetooth system. So that's pretty neat. Okay, so here's a place for your shades right there. You have tap lights, a flood, you have more of a floodlight there, spotlight here, same thing on the other side, like so. And then you have your home link garage door openers here. And here, these are for your huge panoramic sunroof, which we'll show you in just a second. Suede headliner, looking awesome. You have little speakers up here. Um, you have mirrors and lights. The visors are suede as well. And this extends out so you can get the right position that you want. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that this suede is real. It's probably like an Alcantara or, or some kind of synthetic suede, but it's really nice and classy looking. Okay, so you have the panoramic sunroof. So right up here, you have this massive shade covering it up right now. So hopefully you can see that. Let's go ahead and open up the shade. Alright, so there's that, and then you open it up the rest of the way. You have to push it twice to go all the way back. And then you have this massive panoramic sunroof. This portion is fixed, and this portion actually moves. So let's go ahead and vent it up, pushing this button here. You can vent it up like that, or you can open it up like so. And get a lot of airflow through here. And on a nice day, it's really nice to have some nice fresh air coming in. And of course, at any time you just don't want the sun shining on you, you just push this button one time to close the shade. And uh, so you don't actually have to push it twice to close it. And it'll close up for you. And it blocks 100% of the light, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so let's take a look at the visibility here in the back. And you can see, you can see out very well. Uh, headrests are not really an issue. You have the side glass there on the sides to help you out. Of course, you have the blind spot monitoring system, the backup camera, the parking sensors, all that stuff, in addition to, of course, looking out the window <laughs> to look for cars. Really impressed with this vehicle, and I'm sure you are too. So if you have any questions or comments, or if you have any experience with a vehicle like this, please leave it in the comment section. It really help out people with making a decision and give them as much information as possible.